this evening I will send you the video file of the lesson. Let me remind you that our topic is solution of nonlinear equations. We consider we considered one method for solving nonlinear equations. On previous lesson, it's so-called bisection method. This method allows us to find the root of equation, and this method exploits the following idea. If at the end points of the interval the function has different signs, it means that between these points there is at least one root, one zero value. And we can compute the function at the middle point, compare the signs and reduce the size of the interval under consideration. We consider the algorithm, we consider its numerical properties, error analysis, and we solve one of the exercises. We did it on previous lesson. The bisection method is a rather powerful method. But the main drawback of this method is that it has rather slow rate of convergence. It means that the method should perform a lot of a lot of iterations before we find the solution with the Required accuracy. For example, for example, uh, we have estimated the number of iterations required to solve the root finding problem with the uh, accuracy 10 power minus 12. The number of problem, the number of iterations is. Uh, at least 37. Of course, it's not very large, but it's not a very small number. The next method that converges much faster is Newton method. We consider this method on this lesson. Newton methods can be applied for very large class of problems. And when specialized to the problem of uh, locating a zero value of a function, it's often called a newton raphson iteration method. The main idea of this method is as follows. Suppose that we have a function f of x, those zeros are to be determined. Again, uh, our main supposition is that we cannot solve the equation f of x equals to zero analytically. We consider this and we suppose that we cannot find such x star using any analytical formula. We can find only some approximation to the real root of this equation. Let R be a zero value, the point 
of zero value of function f of x. And let x be an approximation to this real root r. Then, if we suppose that the second derivative of a function exists and continues, we can apply uh, Taylor's theorem. And we can write the following formula that f of r equals to zero from the one hand because we suppose that r is a root. So from the one hand, f of r equals to zero. And from the other hand, f of r equals to f of x plus h because x is an approximation to r and h is the difference between r and x. And after that, if we apply uh, Taylor's theorem, we can find that f of x plus h equals to f of x plus h first derivative of f f prime x plus o h square. What does it mean? It means that if the value of h is rather small, it means that the difference between the real root and its approximation is significantly small, then it's reasonable to ignore the terms that included h power 2. Indeed, suppose that h equals to 10 power minus 2. Suppose that the difference between real root and approximation equals to 10 power minus 2. What can we say about h square? In this case, h square can be 10 power minus 4. And the terms that include h power h power 2 and greater we can ignore it because these terms are small if we ignore all h square then we can solve the remaining equation for h because the remaining equation will be linear equation let me rewrite this equation here on the board. We have f of x plus h equals to f of x plus f prime x times h. But the right hand side, sorry, left, left hand side of this equation is zero. It equals to zero. And this equation we can easily solve for h. We can find that h equals to minus f of x over f prime x.
So if x is, is an approximation to r, then x plus h should be a better approximation to the unknown root. So x minus f of x over f prime x should be better approximation. Using this idea, <coughs> we can find that a new approximation point x n plus 1 can be found as uh, x n minus f of x n over f prime of x n. Suppose that we have some initial point x zero. X zero again, it's reconsidered as a initial approximation of a known root. After that, we can compute x one using this formula. Next, we can compute x2, x3, x4, and so on. We can find a root of the of this unknown equation. Let's consider some examples. Let's find, let's consider some example. How we can apply this formula, how we can apply it. Suppose that f of x equals to x square <clears throat> so let's consider um, Let's take let's take more complex function. Maybe let's let, let's take more complex function. Look, something like this. F of x equals to x squared minus two. What is the root of this function? What is the root of the <coughs> of the problem f of x equals to zero? What is the real value of root of this function? Who can answer this question? f of x equals to x squared minus 2. What is the value of root? You can type your answers in chat. You can, uh, you can answer my question using your microphone. Again, I repeat my question. 
Let's consider the equation f of x equals to zero, where f of x equals to x squared minus two. What is the real value of root of this function, of this equation? I'm waiting for your answers. What is the real value of the root of the equation that I write on the board? x squared minus 2 equals to x. Please, uh, sorry, I don't see uh, the board. I see just your screen. Do you see it now? Or you see it? <laughs> We we'll see some other screen. Yes, it's better. Thank you, sir. I can I can type this equation on my screen. If it will be better for you. My question is very simple. What is the real root of this equation? X squared minus 2 equals to X. What is the real root of this equation? From the mathematical point of view, this equation is... Yes, I think it plus, manu, uh, plus minus... Um, Square uh, of two. Sure. Plus minus square root of two. And from the mathematical point of view, the answer is uh, very simple. Square root of two plus minus. If we can see the one solution, the solution can be written as square root of 2. But what is the value of square root of 2? How we can find it? Suppose that we know that we, we can take the initial approximation. We can take uh, first, we consider this function f of x, x square minus 2. And we consider the equation f of x equals to 0. Let's is the first derivative of this function. What will be the first derivative? 2x. 2x, 2x. So it's 2x. Well, after that, 
suppose that the initial approximation, the initial point is one. Let's take one as initial approximation of this unknown value of root. What should we do next? Next, we can apply this formula to find x1 using the value of x0. How we can find x1? x number 1 equals to x number 0 plus f of x number 0 over, sorry, not plus, of course, minus, minus f prime of x 0. And what we have in our case, what will be the value of x1? x0 equals to 1 minus what is the value of f of x0? f of x0 minus 1 minus 1 over f prime of x0. f prime of x0 is 2. f prime of x0 is 2. And we have minus 1 over 2. And the final result is 1.5. We take 1 as initial approximation of square root 2, then the next approximation is 1.5. How to find next approximation? We should apply this formula repeatedly. Take here x1 and find the value of x2. I ask you to compute it. Please find the value of x2 using the value of x1 that we already found. Please find the value of x2.
Well, is it your answer one? Or <laughs> this is the answer of my previous question. Why you take one over two? Not one over two. The new point x one equals to one point five. The new point is one point five. So we can substitute. You should substitute one point five. 1.5 f of x, you should compute here 1.5 using x as 1.5 and f prime using 1 1.5. Well, of course, it's hard to compute Mi minus. No, I think I think it's some mistake. What should you do? You should substitute here x one. Yes, it's one point five minus. What is f of x1? Why 1.5 in square minus 2? What is f of x1? It's 1.5. 1.5 in square minus 2. 2.25, if I'm not wrong. 1.25, I think you're wrong. 2.25. I think you made a mistake. Over, over 2x. What is 2x? Times. 1.5, right? This is the correct formula. Please compute it. It, it cannot be, I think it cannot be greater than 2. Two point two five, it will be one point five in square. This is two point two five. Two point yes, sir. Yes, but minus two and over three, right? And minus. What will be the final result? What will be the value of x two? Seventeen over twelve. Okay, maybe, maybe seventeen over twelve, because I don't know what is 
let's find the value of 17 over 12 in uh, the in decimal numbers 17 over 12 equals to 1.416 and so on I think you are wrong. I think you are wrong. 17 over 12. Let me let me compute it once again. I think you are wrong. No, it cannot be 1.4. What we have here? 1.5 minus 0. 2.5. Well, Or, or may, maybe you're right, maybe you're right, maybe I'm wrong. Or three. Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, please, uh, me, I found uh, 1.58. No, 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 no. I think this solution says 17 over 12, 17 over 12, that, that equals to, approximately equals to. Okay, uh, okay, 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 yeah, I see. 17 over 12. It 1.416 approximately and 66666. Six. Yes, no, 3.5 is wrong. Please, uh, this is the correct, this should be correct also. Well, I hope you understand what should we do next. We should next take X2 and substitute it here and compute and compute X3 using x2 minus f of x over f prime of x2. And it's very interesting to compare our results with the real value of root. Real value is square root of 2, right? And what is the actual value of square root of 2? Let me use just calculator to find it. The real value of square root of 2 is 1.414, 2, 3, and so on. What have we found here? Our first point is 1, is a very bad approximation, right? Because the difference between real value and x0 is very large. Our next point, 1.5, is much closer to the real solution. Our next point, you see, 1.416, and the real answer is 1.414. 
So the difference between our solution at the second step and the real solution is uh, in uh, just two power minus two times 10 power minus three. The difference between the real solution and our approximation is very small. And if we compute the next point, the next point will be much more closer to the real solution. Is it clear? Do you understand the main idea of the method? Uh, please, uh, honestly, me, I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand um, what formula uh, you used. I use this formula. I use the formula that the next point the point with index n plus one equals to current point xn minus f of x over f prime of xn. I use this formula. Okay, please. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, this uh, formula comes from a uh, Taylor formula. Yes, yes. Please, is it possible to prove it? Because really, I was looking for it, but uh, I didn't find the relation between them. I already proved it. This is a Taylor formula. We ignore the terms h square, and when we ignore these terms, we can find that the next point can be taken as a f of x plus uh, so the next point can be taken as x minus f of x or f prime x well maybe the graphical interpretation helps you to understand let's consider some graphical interpretation of the taylor's method. From the description already given, we can say that the Newton's method involves linearizing the function. It means that f of x was replaced by a linear function. And the usual way to do it is to replace the precise Taylor's formula by the linear function that contains only those two terms. Here, L of x, the linear function of x that consists only of two terms of the Taylor series, is a good approximation to f of x, but only in the small vicinity of c. And in fact, we have that L of c equals to f of c <coughs> and L prime C equals to F prime C. The linear function has the same value and the same slope as F of X at the point C. Let's look to this picture. This picture that illustrates the Newton method. Suppose that this point is a point X M. This point is the point F of X M on the curve of a function F of X. 
What is the derivative of a function? From the graphical point of view, the derivative of a function f of x at some point xm is a tangent line. So not a tangent line, but the slope of a tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is a geometric meaning of a derivative. And this is the equation of a tangent line. I can say that the first two terms of the Taylor's formula describes the tangent line that pass through the point XM. And the main idea of a Newton method is as follows. Let's take the point XM. Let's compute the function value f of Xn. After that, let's consider a tangent line that passes through Xm. And let's find the point of intersection between the tangent line and the real axis, real line X. And this point of intersection can be considered as a new point, X and plus one. The point R illustrated here is a real root. XM is a rather bad approximation of a real root, but X and plus one is much closer to the real root and it approximates the real root better. What we should do next? We should take the point X and plus one, compute the derivative at this point, draw a tangent line, and select the next X, the next point, X and plus two. And so on. Well, do you understand the graphical interpretation? Mm, yes, sir. Yes, very good, very good. Newton method is a very powerful method, but sometimes for some functions, it fails to file to find the value of root. And this picture shows you a very simple example where the Newton method, the, the Newton method is failed. Suppose that the, the function looks like this, f of x, right? Very simple function that has only one root r. Let's take x0 as a initial approximation. We take f of x0, we draw a tangent line, and we take the point of intersection between a tangent line and x as x1. Then we take the next point, Again, draw a tangent line and we take X2. You see that X1 is uh, not closer to R. And the distance between X1 and R and X2 and R is larger. This distance is larger. So the point X2 is far away from the real root, 
in comparison with X1. We go far, far and far from the real road. And if we compute <coughs> the tangent line here, this tangent line is a parallel to the real line and it never intersects it. So the Newton method failed to solve this problem. In this example, the shape of the curve is such that for certain certain values, the sequence of the points X, M will diverge. The Newton method will converge to the real root only if we suppose that X0 is sufficiently close to zero of a function. But if we take the initial point far from the real root, the Newton method can fail. Well, this is the pseudo code of the Newton method. As for the bisection method, the input of the algorithm is initial approximation x0, the tolerance, and the maximum number of iterations. The output is a approximation of the solution or the message of fail. The algorithm is uh, very simple. Let's set the counter to 1, while counter smaller than n and a distance between x and x0 is greater than tolerance, then first we update x0, then update x using this formula and increase the counter. If the if the counter smaller than n, then the procedure was successful and we output x. In the other case, the method failed after n iterations. On this lesson, I skip the error analysis. We consider it on the next lesson. But I want to show you one very interesting and important example. Suppose that the task is to find the root of some real number. Suppose that R is a real number and our goal is to find the root of this real number. Of course, if R is a good number, the root is very simple. For example, root of 9 is 3, root of 4 is 2. But what is the value of root 5 or square root 6? square root 7. I don't know. But I can find it numerically. If x is a square root of r, it means that x is a root of the equation x power 2 minus r equals to 0. And we can apply Newton method to this function. Let's do it. Let's derive this formula. 
for this particular case. I do it here in Word. Well, what is our function? Our function f of x equals to x squared minus r because we're going to find such x that equals to square root of r. Okay. What is the first derivative of this function? It's 2x. According to the Taylor's, according to the Newton method formula, x and plus 1, the next point equals to xn minus f of n over f prime xn. Okay, and what will we have in our particular case? We have xn minus, what is f of xn? f of xn is here. Let me write it as xn square minus r over over to x n Let's simplify this formula. If we try to simplify it, we will have here xn minus xn over 2 plus r over 2xn. Okay. If we continue our simplification, I can write here that it equals to xn over 2 plus r over xn and I can move 1 over 2 outside of the brackets. It equals to 1 over 2 times n plus r over Well, let me rewrite the final result. The final result is as follows. That x plus 1, xn plus 1 equals to 1 over 2 xn plus r over xn, where r is the value root of which we are going to find. Very simple and very powerful formula. 
let's look to this example. Suppose we wish to compute square root of 17. What can you say about square root of 17? Can it be 10? No. Can it be 5? No. What, what value we can find, we can take as initial value? As initial value, we can take x0 equals to 4, because 4 in square is 16, and 16 is uh, rather close to 70. And if I take 4 and substitute this value 4 here and compute it, I take that the x1 equals to 4.125. Let's do it for our simple example. x1 sorry. x1 equals to or sorry not four of course one over two four plus sixteen over not sixteen seventeen square root of seventeen no sixty seventeen over four This value will be 4.125. If we take 4.125 and compute x2, we take this value. If we take this value and compute x3, we take this value. And so on. But what is the real value? What is the real value? Let's compute it using calculator. Square root of 17. 17 square root. Yeah. And the real value of, of square root of 17 is 1, 2, 3, 4.1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 5, 6. So these, all these numbers are correct. We compute only three points. We carry out only three steps of the algorithm and we take, we obtain a lot of correct digits after this small point. There are two reasons. Because the method is very powerful and we take a very rather good initial approximation. If we take bad initial approximation, of course, the rate of convergence will be not very fast. But if the initial approximation is correct, the method converges very fast. Well, uh, please, sir. Yeah. Uh, is, is, uh, I would like just to ask, instead of using this method, <coughs> if I use, for example, the Taylor method, will I get the same results? Well, Taylor method allows yeah. us to derive a Newton formula. It's not a different formulas. It, the Newton method is based on a Taylor's formula. It's two different, two different formulas. Newton, for, Newton method and Taylor method. But Newton method can be derived from the Taylor. Well, 
Uh, next week, I will show you the particular example, how it works. And for the next week, I ask you as a home task, try to implement this method on computer. Try to realize, try to write to the program that implements this method. This presentation I already sent it for you. This uh, evening I will send you the video. Try to implement this method. And for example, you can take any of these examples. For example, under the letter A1, x minus cosine x equals to zero. And try to find the root of this equation using the Newton method. Next week, we discuss about the error analysis of Newton method. We discuss about rate of convergence. And we finish this topic. We consider so-called fixed point iteration method but it will be the topic of the next lesson. That's all for today. I stop sharing my screen and I stop recording.